<laughs> so, inside of things, great to have Casey here with us. Now, we have a dilemma. We do. We have a Casey here. We have a Casey. Oh, no. She's much prettier, right? Uh, it's great to have people back. You know, there has been a lot of illness going on. And uh, Tom Sperling is still not with us. Uh, he was in the hospital. It's been like three weeks now that he's been out. I got with him this week. Uh, he uh, is out of the hospital, but it's still knocking him out. And uh, we got to realize, hey, uh, uh, certain illnesses are nothing to mess with. Uh, it's great to have Sandy back. Uh, yeah, there she is. Uh, she's back for Women's Day. It was awesome uh, to hear her speak. Uh, Helen said, what a great job you did uh, preaching, and uh, it's encouraging. But it was all God, yes. It was all God. And then, of course, uh, Roar's back, too. So, you know, we, we have these illnesses in life. Uh, and we're going to talk about spiritual healing today. All right? But healing in general is a challenge. And it depends how bad your hurt is how much healing it takes, right? Yeah. Now, if you haven't noticed, I'm getting a little older. Yeah. No. No. I know, I know. No. But so are you. No. Are you? Not yet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you get older, there's things that hurt that you didn't know you had. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What's that thing? Oh, uh, oh. And uh, yeah. I believe God does that to keep us humble. Yeah. Uh, needing each other and uh, going to get help. Go to the doctor. Now, guys don't like going to the doctor. I don't know why that is. But uh, you gotta go. And as you get older, you realize you, you gotta go more and more. And uh, God uses this stuff to keep us humble. And it's very, very challenging. But it's the same for us spiritually. we got to go to the great physician. we got to go to Jesus and keep getting our healing from Him in every way. Now, if you look in the world, it's not far to see that a lot of people need spiritual healing. Uh, there's a lot of pain and suffering going on. There's depression. There's fear. There's guilt. There's anger. There's bitterness. There's a hardening of heart. Can you relate? And it's all around us, and people need to be healed. And that means we need to become the doctor. We need to heal the people. Amen? You got to walk with Jesus, you got to do what he did. Now, in the world, there's a sense of hopelessness that comes from that. Despair. And people begin to withdraw. And they begin to harden their heart. And give, give in to all sorts of things. They escape into drugs and drinking and all sorts of bad stuff. But I believe that we're always in a state of healing. Just as your body is healing all the time, a lot of times we don't even know. There's these white blood things going on in your body, attacking things that we didn't, we're oblivious to. And if you get a cut on the arm, it just heals. You don't have to think about it. First of all, you feel that. But the deeper the wound, the more the energy it takes to heal. Right? You see that? See where I'm going with this? Yeah. Is that good? Come on, bro. <laughs> so we need constant healing spiritually also. Why? Because we sin every day. And a lot of times we don't even realize it when we're in sin. That's where we need discipling, right? Yeah. Uh, bro, you're awesome, but what you said right there, not good. And we need each other to be physicians for us also to heal ourselves in so many ways. But the question is, what's it going to take? Are you going to be like the guy that kind of avoids going to the doctor? Are you going to be that person who is humble and goes after the healing that we need? Now, uh, most of you know that Barb and I went to school in Malaysia. All right? Now, Malaysia is kind of, you know, borderline third world country. And they have different levels of hospitals. And uh, as students, you couldn't really afford good hospitals if you were there and you got sick, which we did often, okay? Because their food isn't quite what we're used to. And, uh, I mean, some of these hospitals have rats running around in them. That's where we're at. 
One day, I woke up in the morning and I had gotten bitten by something. And my hand was swollen up. This great big thing right there. And I'm not good. I better go in and get this one checked out. Now, Malaysia, you know, they don't have, it's open to the sky. About, there's about a foot of open air from the wall to the ceiling. Because there's only one temperature all year round. And so things get into your room all the time. You never know what's going to be in your room. So I got bit by this thing, and I went into the hospital, and uh, they said it was a virus. I said, no, not a virus. Not, no, come on. And they, they said, no, no, we think it's virus. Uh, okay, I'm going to submit to this. And uh, they said, we're going to give you a shot. A shot for this? And it went through my mind. Is this worth it? Do I trust this doctor? So anyways, I submitted to it. I got a shot. And I'm signing out to leave. And they're like, are you okay? I said, yeah. And they're like, wow. Usually when we give you that uh, person that shot, it's extremely painful. I'm like, thanks a lot. <laughs> so I start walking home. And then about halfway to the door, it hits me. I'm like, ah! And I'm literally dragging my leg. <laughs> I don't know what that thing was. And I'm grateful to be back in America. But really, it comes down to who you're going to see for the healing. You need to go look and talk to people who just don't know what they're doing. Or the people who really can heal you. And it comes down to that. Look in Luke chapter 4. We're going to look at few passages that talk about this. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Help us out. Now, hopefully you can relate with this, because I believe we all need healing. Yeah. Luke what? Okay. Yeah. Luke chapter 4, starting verse 16. This is where Jesus begins his ministry. In verse uh, 16, it says, He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked. Jesus begins his ministry by talking about his purpose. He says, listen, first of all, I'm here to preach the good news to the poor. And to provide for the brokenhearted. If you look in Isaiah 61, it goes on to say that. The people who are broken in spirit, they know they need God. And we got to realize, you look at, are we broken before God? And he says, listen, I came to preach good news to the poor in spirit. And for us, you got to realize that God's looking for us to see that we need him. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have your dreams dashed? Yeah. Yeah. Ever have someone crush you? Yeah. We all have. And it's the world we live in. There's no way around us. But are we prideful and think, I don't need anybody? And we reject the healing that could be for us. Jeremiah 29, you know it. Verse 11. God says, listen, I'm here to give you hope and a future. But you've got to seek me with all your heart. He says he came to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. We're all captive to sin until we allow Jesus to free us up, to deal with the guilt that, are in our, that is in our lives. And many of us feel so much guilt 
that we don't know what it's like not to feel that way. And Jesus says, listen, I, I, I'm here to free you up. You ought to hang with me. I'm here to free you up. No matter where you're at. Have you ever had a sin just own you? Just control your life. Now, we get baptized, we deal with a lot of sin, but then those things tend to creep back into our lives. And if we're not dealing and constantly going to our physician, then we can get back to where we were at. For me, one of the biggest things was bitterness and anger and hatred. And I hated life because I felt like everybody's out for it for themselves. And so I became that way. Now, hopefully you can relate with this. Until you get a different perspective that Jesus came to free us up. He says, I've come to give you a recovery of sight for the blind. People don't see where they're at. A lot of times we don't get it. Isn't it the most amazing when you first study the Bible with someone, you're studying, you're going through the studies, you're not getting it, they're not, and all of a sudden the light bulb goes up. <laughs> Whoa! And they're like, this is awesome! And they're like, they get fired up, and they're like, oh, I get it, I see it, I, 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 they're fired up! Yeah. And it's amazing because now they want everyone else to see it. Yeah. And then they're frustrated because they don't get it. It's right there. It's your problem. And uh, we forget that spiritually we, we're blinded too. Look at Matthew 13. Matthew 13. See if you can relate with this one. Verse 13. Come on, Jay, you got this. Come on, Jay. Now, the same thing will happen to us again if we allow a part of Chapter 13, verse 13. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You'll be ever hearing, but never understanding. You'll ever be seeing, but never perceiving. For these people's hearts have become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. It says they'll ever be hearing, but never understanding. Seeing but never perceiving. You don't get it. Why? Because their hearts are calloused. It bounces right off of them. And they just, it's rock hard. They just can't get it. And it's a dangerous place to be. Yeah. Ever seen anyone fall away from God? Because there's this hardening of heart that happens. They lose the fire in their eyes. That zeal, that freedom slowly dies out. And Jesus says, otherwise, hopefully they would turn and get healed. That turning is repentance. See, that's part of the medicine. Is repentance. It's a changed life. It's a turning. The idea is you're traveling down the expressway, you look like you realize you're going the wrong way. To stop the car isn't the answer. It's to turn and come back. Spend our lives going away from God. Because of our sin. And God says, listen, I can heal you. You need to come back to me. Amen. And that's what repentance is all about. Well, let's look at a few responses to the medicine. A number of responses. Let's go back to Luke 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 22. We're going to continue this little story. On Jesus' first day on the job. First point is denial. Chapter 4, verse 22. This is all spoke well of him, and we're amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. 
Do here in your hometown what we've heard you that you did in Capernaum. I tell the truth, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow and Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. And yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, took him to the brow of the hill in which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. <laughs> but he walked right through the crowd, went on his way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow! First day on the job! Yeah, yep. It's awesome to see Jesus just walk right through that crowd. <laughs> I agree. Now, well, what's going on here? Verse 22, they all spoke well of him. Oh, this is Joseph's son. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> then he starts giving them the medicine. Starts challenging them. And they don't like it. <coughs> so they're furious. Let's kill him. Whoa! Nah. Man. They were in denial of where they were at. And they wanted to go after the messenger. You know, when somebody has cancer and they go to the doctor, the first response, so I've heard, is denial. They don't want to accept it. Uh, it's it's got to be wrong. That can't be. And a lot of times we don't want to see our sin. We don't want to deal with it because it's painful. We, we just want to go on and not have to deal with the pain. And then we don't get healed. We're in denial. You try to help people and they get ticked off at you. Have you ever had that? Yeah. You're in a discipling time and you bring something up and it's bam, defense. Yeah. You're like, whoa! <laughs> you bring a shield to your D time. Yeah. How do you respond when someone's trying to help you? A lot of times, Barb and I do a lot of counseling in marriages. People love it at first. Come in there. Wife's like, fix him. Yep. <laughs> fix him. <laughs> He's like, fix her. Right. And then we try to fix both. And it gets ugly. <laughs> One time, I was studying with a Lutheran minister who had just gone through divorce who needed healing. So we're getting together in these studies, and he said, no, no, ah, no more. I don't want to hear it. No. I thought, okay. Well, it just so happened that we were also studying with another couple who was going through all these horrendous issues in their marriage. And we got to a point, and they said the same thing. No, no, we're going to go to our minister and have him help us. I said, who's your minister? Oh. <laughs> I said, oh. I've just been studying with your minister. That's awesome. So you're going to go to this guy for marriage counseling. Oh, I see. Do you realize that they've gone through a divorce? Oh, uh, yeah. Why would you want to get marriage counseling? And see, sometimes we want to find the easy way out. Yeah. We want to deny the very medicine that could heal us. Look at Revelation chapter 3. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3. You all know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Revelation 3. Verse 14. Last book of the Bible. To the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen. The faithful true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were neither one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich, I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing. 
But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich. And white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. And salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebu rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. There's the medicine again. But he says, be earnest. Deal with this thing. And it's amazing, really, Jesus brings it down to it. You know, he says, you know, you'll know them by their fruit. What's the fruit of your life? Are you lukewarm? Jesus says it's unacceptable. It makes me sick. Now you've made me sick. <laughs> and we got to look at it. What's the only acceptable thing? To be hot. To be fired up. And the challenging thing is we can look at other people, compare ourselves, to think we're okay. And we can, we can compare ourselves to the world, or we can compare ourselves to Jesus. And the challenge for us is to say, listen, I need help. We need healing all the time. Otherwise, we venture into that lukewarm area, and we suffer for it. And so does everybody else that you didn't reach out to, that I didn't reach out to. He says, you don't realize where you're at. You're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. You look at that and say, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. But see, when we see things from the world's eyes, we can look good. But from Jesus' eyes, we need healing in our hearts so we can see. The acid test is the fruit. We play the game, and hopefully we hope that the problems go away. You get somebody who goes to the doctor, and they say, you have urine in your blood. Let's say that happens. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> so, you can do one of two things. You can deny that thing, or you can deal with it. Let's go to John 5. Point number two. Excuses. It's going to get hot now. John chapter 5. Verse 1. It says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called the Seda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me in the pool when the water stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. But Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. You know, Jesus asked, asked an interesting question here. He says, do you want to get well? And you wonder, why would he say that? I mean, 38 years, but you got to really think about it, 38 years. If that, that pool heals, why not just live it? Hello. Figure a way Hello. to find a way to get in that, that pool so you can get healed. And Jesus says, do you want to get well? And see, some people just don't. They don't want to do it. They don't want to suffer through it. 
Well, what does it mean to this guy if he gets healed? And that's really what it comes down to. If I get healed, that means I have to work for a living. i got to get a job. I have no excuse. And so, I can't just take the handouts. See, some of us just want the handouts. We don't want to change. Come on, I have to deal with people then. Some people, times we don't want to deal with people. We want to be alone and not bothered because people are pain. And I just want to be relaxed and take life easy. I love sympathy. Oh, you poor thing. I love the handouts. And people do this when it just comes to being a disciple. If I become a disciple, what does that mean? Wow, this is scary stuff. I have to share my faith? Are you kidding me? Help people? And time, energy, money? No, thank you. Well, do you want to get healed? Come do on. you want to get what? Well? And that's what goes through a lot of people's minds. And people don't want to get healed in the church either. They get to a level and they think, I'm okay. And Jesus says, no, that's, that's lukewarm. You don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be free? Then you've got to take the medicine. He blamed others. Well, these people get in there before me. It's their fault. And we can do that. Yeah. We can blame people for our sin. Yeah. And why we're, we're weak. Yeah. It's my disciples' fault. Yeah. They don't call me enough. Ah. Yeah, see? And, you know, they're not helping me. It's all their fault. They don't return my calls. He made me mad. He's not loving. He's harsh. That's why I'm not changing. Oh, so it's their fault that you're not happy. Come on. And Jesus' answer is to get up. Deal with that thing. Move. Do something. Pick up your mat. The mat for this guy was his security blanket. Okay? Deal with the issue. What is your security in? Is it God or something else? Deal with the issue. And then follow him. Move on. It's not going to hold water with Jesus. Oh, it's their fault that you stayed in sin. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna work with Jesus. You know, it's so fun being a leader. You are a target. It's like, you're everybody's fault. I mean, I'm everybody's fault. I'm everybody's fault. You can blame me, buck stops here, that kind of thing. But my minister, boom, boom, boom. And my attitude is, amen. You want to blame me, amen. And I say I'm sorry all the time because I do blow it. And I will continue to blow it. But I'm going to try to do my best. But we need to take responsibility for our own sin. And if I need to change, amen. I'm not perfect. Far from it. Come on. You can ask Bob. The question is, do you want to get well? Let's look at the third point, pride. Look in 2 Kings chapter 5. You guys had enough? No. no. Oh, okay. Never enough. 2 Kings chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Second Kings, right after First Kings. <coughs> now Naaman was commander of the army 
of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because to him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to the master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I'm sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me? But Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes. He sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. Wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash and be cleansed? In, and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you have not done it? How much more then will he, when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down, dipped himself in the Jordan seven times. As the man of God told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. <laughs> what an amazing story. Yes. In fact, in Luke 4, Jesus talked about it. He says, a lot of people had leprosy in the day of Naaman. But he was the only one that got healed. we got to look at what's going on here. You know, Naaman almost didn't get healed because of his pride. The servant helped him out. The lowly servant. Well, let's look at the issues that was stopping him from getting healed. First of all, he wanted a huge production. Oh, I want this, I want that, I want, you know, fire, you know, whatever. He wanted production. And sometimes that's what we want. In our pride, we think, no, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be this and that. And I need to get with church leaders to help me. Because I'm important. Come on. That's how we are. And Elijah's servant comes up and does it instead of Elijah. And he's not used to being treated like this. And the question comes up Do you want to be cleansed? Are you willing to do what God asks you to do? Come on. He wanted cleaner water. Water isn't good stuff. And see, a lot of times, we want to prescribe the healing. Wow. We want to be able to do it our way. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get healed, but it's got to be like this. Let me tell you how it's going to be done. <laughs> and it goes back to, hey, you're too harsh to me. You're too whatever. Come on. And it comes down to, do you want to get healed? Well. How long have you been in the sin you've been in? What are you willing to do? we got to submit to God's way. He goes off in a rage. He's ticked off. And he comes to his senses. And he submits. Sometimes that's it. That's our problem. Yeah. We don't like to submit. That's true. Because we're so <coughs> stinking right. We want the easy way to change. We don't want any suffering involved. 
I'll, do, I'll devote my life to you, God, if you do this and this and that for me. Versus, I'll devote my life to you, God, no matter what. And watch you do miracles. The servant God and the humble out. You know, sometimes we need to just listen to everybody and anybody. You get a little kid coming up to you and says something about your character, you listen. Come on, Victor. Your children challenge you on something. Listen. It's a very humbling thing. Right, Candace? Yeah, listen to but God works to everybody. Right. Yeah. Come on. And sometimes we disregard people because we don't think they know what they're doing. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. Versus listening through, through the direction that God gives to anybody. We fight it, and then we wonder why we don't change. We don't change. And then we wonder why we're not happy. That's all comes down to our pride. Yeah. And your disciples say, hey, you having a quiet time every day? No. Uh, you're, eating, you're praying every day? No. Sharing your faith? No. Are you confessing sin? No. Oh, okay. I can see this is a real deep issue that we got to figure out. <laughs> Just take the medicine you've been given. Right. Go to Jesus, go to the scriptures, and get healed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's like the person who goes to the doctor. Oh, your cholesterol's real high. Are you taking your pills? Well, no. <laughs> Take your pills! <laughs> Not that big of a deal. And then we wonder why. Let's go to Matthew 20 and look at the fourth part, the humble part. Matthew chapter 20. Maybe you can relate with this. Maybe this is you. The humble, happy heart. Yeah, that's key. Right? Matthew 20, verse 29. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord! Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them, Be quiet. But they shouted all the louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them, What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, We want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed him. Why did they get healed? Because they were aggressive to get the help. They cried out, and people even tried to stop them. And they didn't let that stop them. What is it that stops you from getting the healing? What obstacle do you need to deal with in your life that is stopping you from getting the healing you need? And are we humble? Are we willing to shout all the louder? Well, I tried. They don't listen. It's their fault again. Or is it, listen, I'm going to keep going until I get the help I need. That's the heart we're talking about. Why did they do it? They wanted to be healed more than anything else. And that's got to be us. Why stay where we're at? You want to get healed or do you want to let your pride, our excuses, or denial of the truth get in the way to stop us? God rewards humility. You know, last week I ended with a challenge like I normally do. And I said, hey, find three people, anybody, and ask them, what is it that I need to change that will help me have greater relationships? And this last week, only three people asked me. And one of them was Carrie. Not even in the same Wow. Carrie's getting baptized, though. Come on. Monday night. Oh, Monday night. <laughs> but that's the heart that we got to have, not just before we become a disciple, but every day to the day we die. You're going to have to go to the people that are going to tell you what you need to hear. 
And you gotta be aggressive. Now, don't everybody blow up my phone now. <laughs> we'll try. Oh, yeah. But you know, there's a few people in here I wanna lift up with this kind of hope. I think Marlene has got this hope. It's turning red. <laughs> She's grown like fast. Yeah. Yeah. Always asking advice. Always trying to get advice. It's no wonder that she's been so fruitful in this last half year and year. It's amazing. And she's growing like rapid fire. That's what happens when we're aggressive to get the help. The other person I think of is Lorada. I don't know where she is. Oh, she's way back. Of course, Chris will think it's all him, right? Yes. <laughs> but Lorado's growing like fast. It's awesome to watch her change, constantly getting the help that she needs. There's a man by the name of George Melton, and what he said, a quote that he had is, of one thing I am certain, the body is not the measure of healing. Peace is the measure. And that stands true for physical or spiritual. We're going to close out one last passage, Hebrews chapter 6. Great stuff, Jay. Come on, bro. You got and I want to share this last passage because uh, there's, a, there's a challenge to all of us to remain faithful to the day we die. And this passage has always kind of scared me. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. This is, therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance, there's that word, guys, from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. Instructions of, about baptisms, the laying out of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible. For those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance. Because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again, and subjecting Him to public disgrace. You know, this passage says, listen, it's a time to move on. Quit staying like an infant. Start maturing. Grow up. Don't stay where you're at. Don't stay in that sin that keeps you from growing. And it may be one of these things where it's not uh, some major sin. It might be what in our minds is minor that erodes at our hearts and stops us. And eventually what happens is you fall away because there's a slow choking. And he says here, listen, let's not lay again this, the teachings of repentance and baptism and all these things. These are basic things. You know you should repent. You know you should have greater faith. Let's move on. He says, because eventually you're going to fall away. In verse 7, he says, land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. And in the end, it will be burned. Wow. Question is, what kind of crop are you producing? What's the fruit of your life? Are you drinking in that life-giving rain that's causing you to grow and mature and bear fruit? Or are you producing thistles that are going to be burned? What he's saying here is now, we need to be the healers. We need to produce fruit, and there's a lot of work to do, guys. This is why we're doing the special contribution. The monies that we use helps provide uh, people to help, to train, to teach, all over the world. And there's a lot of needs. And you guys know this. Don't stay where you're at. Mature, grow. we got to raise up a lot of leaders. We're growing fast. And I need people to engage in this so that we can handle the growth. Otherwise, people will fall away. That's just the way it is. 
we got to be diligent to grow. We've got to be diligent to take the medicine. So, now, I'm going to leave you with a challenge. Do you love that? Yeah. 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 Okay, here's your challenge. Be aggressive to get healed. Attack that one area that you've lived in. Do what you got to do. Grab a hold of someone and say, help me. And you cry out and get the change, the repentance that needs to happen. And others will be healed and God will get the glory. Amen. Amen.